It's the Orioles on Masson, and it's a day game and a big house expected for this concluding game of the four-game set against the Kansas City Royals. The Orioles need a W here today in order to split this four-game set and also to win the season series. And welcome, everybody. You see the blue skies, lots of it, some high clouds, a lot different than last night with that three-hour, nine-minute rain delay. So the players getting to the ballpark very late today, but in a ball game that, as always, continues to be very meaningful. For the Orioles, they need this one. They do not want to go one and three against anybody, certainly not against a Kansas City Royals team that they came in expecting to beat. This has been a rather unusual series. Look at how these games have gone, starting with the opener, dominated by the Royals. Royals 8 to 2, Billy Butt the 3 for 5. He almost hit for the cycle. Matt Wieters a homer and a 2 for 3. Matt is going to be out today. Game 2, the Orioles won it. Same way, definitively. Manny Machado with a big night, the two home runs, four RBIs. Gonzalez, probably his best performance of the year. And then we go right back the other way last night with the Royals winning at 7 to 3. Alex Gordon, two home runs, 2 for 5, his first multi homer game of the season. Quintanilla continued hot. Quintanilla is going to be out of the lineup today as well with the left-hander in. So these games have been very distinct, Jim Palmer. They've been the one way or the other pretty much decisively decided early in the game. Well, they have and I think the other factor, and it really comes to play today as far as I look at this game, you got Tommy Hunter pitching for the Orioles and you got Bruce Chen. They they throw 47 home runs between them. Tommy, 26. And again, he's missed some starts because he was been back and forth from Norfolk. So you have a team like the, the Royals that came in there. They'd only scored, what, 29% of their runs? The uh, Four runs uh, on uh, Thursday via the home run last night, the first four runs via the home run. So, you know, well, I still remember FanFest, and Tommy's trying to get her Twitter account. I said, what's it going to be? Because I'm sitting next to him. He said, Tommy goes boom. I go, not a good name for a pitcher. <laughs> so he said, I, so I said, are we going to have Tommy he goes boom today? He says, no, Mr. Fireworks. I said, I don't know what's going to happen. But, uh, you know, again, the Orioles need to hit home runs. And, you know, Weeders, again, uh, is going to be out of the lineup, as you mentioned, because he's caught extra inning games, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, he's been a, a, an integral part of their offense lately. So we'll just kind of have to see how this plays out. Well, what's happened in the first three games is what's happened all season long for the Orioles. We talked about this on Friday night, and nothing has changed here in this series. When they win, they win very well. When they lose, they lose by a lot. Yeah, and you know, the one thing is, you know, you look at uh, the Orioles, obviously, there's a tremendous difference, and you know, we talked about it. That's why they're over 500, yet they're about, what, 50-some runs uh, given up more than they've scored, but you know, the one thing about Tommy Hunter, he will throw some home runs. He pitched very well in his last start. He doesn't walk a whole lot of guys, and I just thought the way this series would play out, Kansas City came in playing well. Orioles had won five in a row, were unable to win on Thursday night. You, you usually think that Kansas City's going to run you out of the ballpark, so uh, t it's been a little bit different. They all like to hit here. Let's just hope the Orioles, on probably, what, about five and a half, six hours sleep, uh, they have their hitting shoes on, because it could, it's one of those games where, instead of being one-sided, as we've seen, Gary, it could be one of those 10-9 to nine games. Well, what's happened uh, also today with the names we told you who are out of there, Weeders, Quintana is going to be out. Again, the matchup's going on, as Buck Showalter has done all season. One, he tries to get the best group out there against whomever happens to be pitching, and two, trying to keep everybody on the small club active and playing every day. So we're going to see Mark Reynolds, who's had only three at-bats in this series back in there. We're going to see Adam Jones take on the DH role. The shuffle and the pushing of buttons continues for the Orioles. Well, it is and you hope, you know, again, the lineup the Orioles are going to put out there, they're hitting 431 against Bruce Chen. So Chen hadn't won until his last start in seven straight starts. He's kind of been a streaky year the last two years. We know he can pitch. He's won 12 games each year. This year, only eight. So you have the right guys in there for the Orioles. They're just going to have to be in the moment, and that means you have to win today. All right, and the Orioles take the field here at Camden Yards, and we are just about set to go on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. We thank you for coming on board to join us, and when we come back, we'll take a look at the lineups.
brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. And by Jeep. Jeep and the unique brand of freedom you'll find only in the full line of Jeep vehicles. Visit jeep.com to learn more. Some overcast uh, today, but a lot of sunshine and blue sky. Our train game time temperature, 85 degrees to start it, and a breeze blowing out towards center, humidity way down. Visit train.com for an independent train comfort specialist dealer near you. It's hard to stop a train. Starting lineup brought to you by Dodge for the Kansas City Royals. They've got Gordon Escobar, Mostakas, Butler, Kane, Frank Core, Hosmer, Pena gets the uh, catching duties and gets for the series. Billy Butler, much like he's done against the Orioles all year. See your authorized Dodge dealer and experience a world of performance, design, and fuel efficiency. Schedule a test drive or go to Dodge.com and check out their powerful line. And our AFSIA Intelligent Report, visit at uh, AFSIA.org, the Association for IT Pros. Well, day and night, uh, not good numbers for Tommy Hunter, 6.55 ERA. That's the fifth highest in baseball, uh, 24 runs in 33 innings pitch. So you hope that changes, home run derby. Again, uh, Tommy goes boom. Well, hopefully that will not happen today. 26, and if you throw them, make them solos. And again, the right stuff. Uh, struggles against right-handers. Uh, again, they're hitting over 300 to 318. And the one good thing, neither of these pitchers, Chen, of course, pitching on the road today, pitch well on the road. Tommy has the home field advantage where he's over 500 with a, a lower ERA by about a run than he, when he puts on the road grays. This is the ball game to decide the season series. And as Gordon has done throughout, he comes up mashing. Fouls that one off. It's been a, a big series for the leadoff batter. Alex Gordon has had a, a five for 14, three home runs, and uh, three RBIs. And two, of course, of the homers have been leadoff homers. And he starts this one out with a base hit. That'll be played in center field by McLeod. Gordon's on with a single. Yeah, take a look at the Oriole defense here uh, at Camden Yards on Sunday. Ford McLouth as Jones will be the DH. Marquecas in right field. Machado, Hardy, and Dino. Robert uh, playing all around the field. Uh, Mark Reynolds back in the lineup. And uh, Taylor Teagarden, a good catch and throw. And he only has three hits on the year, but two of them have won games for the Orioles. Some consideration, obviously, of having a Matt Wieters in as a designated hitter. His numbers, however, against Chen, only one for seven. And uh, really needs a couple of days off. Playing small ball, great bunt, Escobar. And almost into his head. As Hunter gets it over there, and a nice play by Reynolds. That was headed right towards Escobar. He gets the sacrifice, and Gordon down to second base. Well, Tommy plays this perfectly. They give him an out. Boy, you'll take that here in the first inning, especially they've scored seven and eight runs in two of the games. So, Perfectly, and again, uh, it's very difficult sometimes to make that throw because a lot of runners do not stay in that 45-foot line, so they're actually on the grass. But again, made the play look easily. Escobar picking up the sacrifice, runner in scoring position now, and here is Mustakas. Mustakas coming in with a 254 average power hitter, and the 17 home runs that he has picked up on the season. We've uh, mentioned throughout this four game set Kansas City very good ball club when they get the lead in a game and again they're trying to get that lead early. The is 260 on the year with runners in scoring position. Hunter gets the pitch away to him and a one ball one strike count. Yeah I certainly can understand where uh, Ned Yost their manager of the Royals is coming from because again that, those numbers are overwhelming but. Again, if you give up outs early and then your starter doesn't pitch well, which has been the uh, malaise for Kansas City, and all of a sudden you've got big time problems. You don't get to the back end of your bullpen, and they have the third best bullpen in the American League. The Orioles in, in the number two spot. Mustakas' numbers in these situations in this series, Royals have gone six for 17. That ball put high in the air, high sky, McLeod Marcakis. Clout is there. He's got it. Runner will tag. And Gordon will move over to third base. So Mustakas on the high fly ball. Clout hauls it in. And uh, there are two down and a runner at third base. So that will bring Butler up. And not the guy you want to face, period, much less with somebody on. The highest batting averages against the Orioles this season. Jeter's number one. Sin Shu Chu is number two, and Brett Lowry with Toronto, and then both 
Kansas City players Butler and Escobar in the top five in average against the Orioles. Yeah, and that's why you say thank you very much when you give them an out, especially when a guy's hitting over 350 against you, which is what Escobar is doing. And then you, you know, right here, if, and we know Billy Butler has been hot. Not only is he hitting home runs, he's hitting home runs to all parts of the ballpark. You know, the three run shot on Thursday night, uh, that was to left field, and then he crushed one to right center last night. The delivery by Hunter to him, that'll be taken for a strike, but there is one for four off Tommy Hunter. Tommy Hunter against the Kansas City Royals is 1 and 0 oh in his career. He's had two starts against them. Both of them came at Kansas City. One ball, one strike count. Two down and the pitch will be inside and it will go to 2 and 1. Butler here in uh, this ballpark has really liked hitting here. He's got a 342 lifetime average here at Camden Yards and six home runs in 19 games played here. Two ball, one strike delivery. And he reaches, and that will be fouled away and even the count up. Yeah, there's a 95, which we don't always see Tommy Hunter reach. Now, the first time he ever pitched in an Oriole uniform was in Kansas City last year, and he came in, pitched a, I think about two innings in relief, and was throwing 96, 97. But usually when he starts, it's somewhere around 89 to 92. But that one was at 95, and he was late. He's tired. Here's a 2 2 delivery and a swing and a miss. Great pitch. Hunter came in to get him. Butler's retired. No runs, one hit, no errors. Base runner left on. Orioles lineup. you by Southwest Airlines. It'll be Marquegas, Hardy, and McClough, Jones, Ford, and Reynolds, Machado, and Dino, and Teagarden, Nate McClough. Last night uh, against the Royals, had the two for four with a double. They'll get another shot at it playing in center today. Take a look at our AFC uh, Intelligence Report for Bruce Chen, the veteran lefty. Uh, again, a couple of 12 game win seasons. This year, eight. Road woes, four and six with a 6.29 ERA. Fly away, the uh, Hall of Fame broadcaster, the late uh, Dave Niehaus. That's what he used to describe home runs. 21 home runs this year. And this is a home run ballpark. And for the Royals, boy, they would love. They won two out of three against the White Sox. They would love to win three out of four. So we'll see if he can seal the deal. Again, for the Orioles, 431. That's the lineup against Chen. Lifetime, 28 for 65. And they're going to kick it off with one into the gap by Nick Marquegas. That'll get him out of an 0 for 11. He'll make the turn. Kane will get it in. Marquegas has got a double. And the Orioles on the board in the first pitch. Well, we talked about in the opening about being in the moment. The 0 for 11 was not a real number other than, I mean, that's what you had to put down. He has hit the ball many times in this series. Hard sacrifice fly line drive on Thursday. And right here gets a ball in the middle of the plate. And Chan, of course, a 
change up fastball threw the ball a little bit harder but he'll top out around 87. So our Nissan pitch track get to Nissan summer saving days event ends September 4. You can go to choose Nissan.com or see your local Nissan dealer. Here is uh, Hardy. Now Marikakis is 7 for 13 lifetime off Chen now. Hardy's 4 for 8 as he stands in. And he will foul it the other way. Hardy's had a tough series. One hit in 11 at bats against the Kansas City Royals in the first three games of this four game set. But an RBI chance early. This is the way the games have gone. Uh, one or the other of these teams has gotten on the board in the first couple of innings, and the game has been over. And that'll miss outside. A one ball, two strike count on Hardy. The Orioles in the series so far, they have gone uh, five for 18 with runners in scoring position. The team continues last in the American League with a 238 team batting average. With runners in scoring position. Yeah, and Bruce Chen is saying, I want not only want to get Hardy out, I don't want him to advance the runner. And JJ is saying, not only do I want to get a base hit, but if I don't, I want to get Marcakis with less than two outs to third base. Escobar holding him tight at second and a great breaking ball. Wow. Got to make the play. Runner will stay as Pena lobs it down to Hosmer for the strikeout. I'm going to take a look at the Royals' defense. Uh, Gordon Kane and uh, Frank Core uh, really speedy outfield and Mustakas Escobar boy what a shortstop he's played in these uh, first three games gets made some nice plays. Hosmer flagging down line drives and and Brian Pena with Perez taking the afternoon off which is a good thing because he's had a great hitting series Salvatore Perez their 22 year old young catcher. And with a runner at second and one down here's Nate McLeod hitting in the third spot with Adam Jones DH and slow roller second base gets his up that time. Didn't get it. And an infield hit and a big play early as McLeod. That's why you run him out. He's got an infield single. Yeah part of Nate's uh, game plan is uh, hit it and then put the pedal to the metal. And again, Chris Guest just has to go. If you anticipate, which Nate doesn't, because again, let's see, he beats it just, or at least a tie. Great camera work to show you what Tim Cheetah was looking at at first base. Hosmer knew that was going to be close. He tried to get off the bag as quickly as he could, but even that was not going to help or change the call. So Adam Jones. As the designated hitter, first time he's had that role with the Orioles, and he's never had an at bat as a designated hitter. He's come in in four different ball games where he's been put in the DH spot during the game, but never got an at bat as a result. He replaced other players who were DHing, never got to the plate. One away. Jones will put that one up in the air towards the fans and right, and that's where it's going to end up. Jones coming in with a six game hit streak. He too has put up numbers against Chen. He is six for 13 with a home run lifetime off the starter. Yeah, so those are numbers yeah, we'll see yeah. up and down the lineup. And he's having a great August. He hadn't hit a home run. He was still looking for home run number 100 and home run number 25 on the year, which would tie his career high of last year. Jones hitting 366 so far in the month of August, obviously among the regulars. Great number. Betamete over 300. Weeders over 300 in August. And of course, Machado with the limited at bats here. 0 1 count, first and third. Chen, not his best move. Boy, he doesn't really have a real best move. They've stolen 16 out of 22, so for a lefty, he really hasn't been able to control the running game very well. Chen, who played for two plus years with the Orioles, a familiar sight to most of the players who are in the lineup for the O's. In this game, and there's the fourth throw that he has made over to first base. Chen has faced the Orioles once this year, took a loss, gave up six runs, seven hits, and four innings in a ball game back on the 25th of May here in Baltimore against the Royals. His lifetime mark is two and two against the O's. 
Here's the 0 1 delivery. Jones puts it down the line to foul. Off the facade. Yeah, he's going to change speeds with the best of them. Fastball 83 to 87. That change up at 77. So nice little separation between them. So Adams trying to put it in play, preferably if not a base hit in the air, and he's going to have to do it under tough circumstances, down by two strikes. Jones 265 with runners in scoring position, but also one of the game's best two strike hitters. And the pitch will be taken up high, and the count will go to a ball and two strikes. Yeah, what an amazing number to have 44 percent of your hits with two strikes. That's what Adam Jones has been able to do. This season, he is fifth in the American League with the percentage of hits coming on two strikes. And a swing and a miss as Chen bore down and got him. Well, we we down. Yeah, we told you Bruce Chen's coming off one of his best starts. So only two runs in six and two thirds innings against the White Sox. And they told him, they violent saying, hey, how about putting a little bit more on that fastball? And he made a perfect pitch down and away at 88. This has been the real concern for Island and for the manager, Ned Yost, as well. It's been about Chen's not inability, but seemingly not desiring to throw that fastball. Stolen base easily gained by McClough. No throw made. Then eight McClough gets in scoring position with two down and a 1 0 count on Ford. Just took off on that one and Chen really didn't even hold him. Here's a big chance early in the ball game. First inning. Base hit here is going to score a couple. The 1 0 delivery and that ball is going to be popped up in the air to shallow right field. Frank Core coming in, gets out. Frank Core calls him off and makes the catch. No runs, couple of hits, no errors. Two left in scoring position. No score. Double and get your second room of flooring free. 877-241. No score as we go to the second inning. First chance, real good chance to score going to the Orioles. But not able to come away with a run of it. Yeah, well, Tommy Hunter, of course, uh, what the last five starts, two or fewer runs. And again, uh, 10 out of the last 15. Boy, he would have liked to have seen a base hit there, even a looper, blooper, whatever. Get on the board. That's what the uh, Royals did for Luis Mendoza last night, early lead, and he coasted through the first six. Keep in mind, Tommy Hunter's in an unusual uh, distance in the games started. He was supposed to start Wednesday, but in that long ball game on Tuesday, he got up and warmed up. He threw about 30 pitches in the bullpen and did not enter the ball game. So Buck Showalter decided. We can't put him in the ball game. He was scheduled to pitch on Wednesday after a 30 pitch warm up on Tuesday. So they pushed him back four days. So he has not started a ball game since the third. So nine days. Between starts. That is foul back. 
And the count will go to a ball and two strikes. And that might even help his velocity. And we saw that in the first inning when he got into uh, to the mid 90s. We never see that as a starter. And when a guy went out and took my cutter like that, that's when I know it's time to go in on the fist. Let's see if he goes back inside. One, two, that's towards the middle. Hardy in front. Hardy smoothness right there, and Kane is retired. Went away. Maryland Lottery striking rich contestant of the game. Connie Fassett from Bel Air. Connie, you've won 500 for being selected, and you get 100 more for every strikeout recorded by an Oriole pitcher from the Maryland Lottery. See how you can turn non winning striking rich scratch offs into cash. You can enter to win great O's prizes, mdlottery.com slash strike it rich. Andrew Campos with the plate today. Tim Cheater, Bill Welke, Chris Gucciani are the umpires. Four game series, so they all get a chance behind the plate. Yeah, this is one of the uh, better umpire crews. I mean, we haven't had a whole lot of uh, questions, guys turning around. I will never use that as a judgment of whether the umpires are good. Well, they're good in the last three games. Okay. How's yes, that? That's good. They've had a good They've series. Been very good. Players arguing with umpires tells me nothing about the umpiring. One ball, one strike <laughs> count on Frank Gore. Frank Gore, two for ten in the series. One one delivery on the way, and that's back into the screen. As far as we know, nobody slept at the ballpark last night as far as the players are concerned. Can't say the same about broadcasters. Well, we just don't know that. Yeah, that's you know, in the old days, if this uh, this was Buck Showalter when he was with the Yankees, he, he had a day game uh, following a night game. He'd camp out in the Gene Monahan gave him a nice little bed, candlelight, and everything. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, candlelight. <laughs> okay, candle opera. Okay, same thing. Bring Liberace in to play a few notes, put you to sleep. Not going to go that far. Here's the 1 2 delivery. Inside just missed on Francoeur. 2 and 2. Ball game ended about 1 15, of course. And then the uh, quick turnaround. Players did not get to the ballpark but very late today. For both ball clubs. Swung on a miss. Hunter's eating him up inside. He said he foul tipped it. And he did. Ooh. Because that bat stays alive. Yeah, already put strikeout down. Nice little breaking ball. Oh, I don't know. Ball never moved. I think he got one on that yeah, one. Yeah, hand buck. <laughs> Bunch of all the hands on hips. Well, I'm taking it all back about the umpire. <laughs> it doesn't take not much to change my mind. Just <laughs> see? Yeah, there you go. Two ball, two strike count. Frank Corr winning a quick argument there. And that one's further inside and a three ball, two strike count. So Hunter will have to throw a couple of extra pitches here in order to get Frank Corr after it sure looked like he had struck him out. Eighth pitch of the at bat, 3 2 delivery on the way, and he walked him. And he, and he walked him because it is very difficult when you don't pitch in. Tommy uh, is, is better to his glove side. In other words, in the lefties, away from righties. So he tries to come in and he gets the ball in. And in this ballpark, when you've thrown 26 home runs uh, over the course of the year, you're going in, you better go in. But you go in three and two, and you miss like he did, even though he threw the ball very well. The runner goes to first. So. Here's Hosmer with a runner on and one away rather than two outs and the base is empty. And the pitch taken up high. Eric Hosmer, he too has had a two for ten in this series. Ten home runs, 46 RBIs on the year for the first baseman. He is 0 for 4, lifetime off Tommy Hunter. 1 0 delivery by Hunter. Little break on that one is in there for strike 101. Yeah, last year third in rookie voting. And you talk to his manager, Ned Yost says this guy is going to be a gold glover. He's going to hit 300. And he's going to hit 30 home runs every year. That's how much faith they have in him. The 1-1 one -one delivery to him, and there was one he wanted to jump on and fouled it right straight back. Take a look at our Hollywood Casino League leaderboard, slots, tables, dining, ultimate triple play at Hollywood Casino at Charlestown races. Fewest walks in the American League, Kansas City Royals. They come up swinging at. Uh, 15.32 plate appearances per walk, the highest, and only 281 as a result. Here's the 1 2 delivery and getting to chase. Foul tip held on to by T Garden. Yeah, a little uh, wrinkle. He had a good swing and a cutter up and in, and then watch this little backdoor cut. You throw it to the outside corner, 
And then you bring it back and the, the speed the movement at least hopefully will get hitters to get out and boy what a great camera angle to see Eric Hosmer out on his toes. That's what you want to do change speeds. And change the rhythm of the batter. So there are two down with a runner at first base. And here is Brian Pena. Pena is doing the catching hitting 259 on the year. This is going to be his first appearance in this series. Pena the uh, backup catcher for the Royals. And facing Hunter for the first time. Hunter will get the strike into him. One ball one strike. Tommy has given up the second most home runs in the American League with the 26 that have been surrendered this year. Look over to first base. Frank Core not going anywhere. And close but not quite on the inside part of the plate two and one. Yeah, pretty tiny uh, strike zone. Outfield shaded towards left. Gets waiting on deck here, and Hunter will miss with that one down low. So he falls behind here, three balls and one strike. This is where part of the problem for the Orioles has come in the two losses. It's been the bottom part of the order. Here in this series, those who have hit in the lower part of the order have really done some damage, including Getz, who is waiting on deck. He's been uh, very good making contact. Hosmer's been down towards the bottom part as well, and there's a strike. Is well, if you're not going to call the low pitch, you got to call something. So Pena, of course, he wants to go down. He, just, he thinks this ball is up and away. And it's somewhere close, but if you're not going to call the knee-high pitch. Our Kia pitch tracks brought to you by Kia Motors. To learn more, visit Kia.com. Runner goes. So again, much, much more velocity for Tommy Hunter. Frank Corey back to the bag. Pena coming off of one of his rare home runs that he picked up on Sunday. First homer since September of 09. Picked up that home run against Texas. And it looks like it almost has to be thigh high and middle in because he does swing hard. He's a switch hitting catcher. 3 2 runner going. Pena ground ball. Middle. Hardy. And a real good pick by Reynolds at first base. That will end the inning and save. It could have been a first and third with only two outs. And hi to you too. No score. side for the Orioles this year not this time though this ends an inning well J.J. Hardy he gets to it you know, not a lot of speed but you could see him going towards a right center field has to somehow be able to watch this with the hips this is where the lower body strength and agility and footwork comes in and then 
Mark Reynolds. Ooh. Well. Right off Hunter's fingers as it went by. No, no for a pitcher. Sometimes just can't help yourself. Well, yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Uh, Kevin Brown, that's Kevin Brown disease. Broke his finger. And he kept doing it, and Mike Flanagan said, Kevin, that's just, he was a pitching coach. <laughs> it's not a good thing to do. Reynolds will lead it off. Well, first of all, if the ball's hit hard, you definitely don't want to grab it. And if it's hit easy, your shortstop's going to catch it. You have to know where your defenders are playing. And that ball wasn't hit hard. Reynolds will take the pitch away. Mark has an 0 for 3 in the series, getting a start at first base. One reason, 3 for 5. Lifetime off 35 year old Bruce Chen. 1 0 delivery. And a check swing that bounces all the way to the backstop and a one ball, one strike count. See against the uh, changeup. No, well, there you go. They look at the numbers and they look at the numbers. It's about changing speeds. For Chen, uh, you know, his first batter he faced in Chicago, even though he would win that game. Uh, Gordon Beckham hit a home run today. The first pitch, in the battery face. Nick Markakis waffled a double up the gap. Here's the two-one delivery. What was said by Yost, uh, Ned Yost, after his last start, quoted in the Kansas City Star. Yost said of Chen, his last three or four starts, he's come out and he hasn't established his fastball. All he's doing is throwing 82, 83, trying to get his control down, but he's got nothing to speed the bats up. So they, the opposing hitters, sit soft against Chen. Which you can do anyway until you get the two strikes, but and there is a pitching coach, uh, Dave Island, and the same. Well, if you can throw 86, 87, throw 86 or 87. I mean, that's what I've said about Tommy Hunter. We saw him win 13 games down in Texas. I saw him throw 96 97 against Kansas City. Did it go away? I don't think so. Well, we see him today 93 to 95. Maybe you got to have nine days rest. Well, but why? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That would be the question. 3 2 delivery, and that'll be filed away by and, Reynolds. And, and I don't mean, and I, you know, I look at Tommy Hunter and I look at a guy who commands the ball well, both sides of the plate. You don't have to throw every pitch 93 to 95 because you can back off, you can add, you can subtract, and that's part of pitching. Reynolds 269 off lefties, only a buck 88 off right handers. He'll get the eighth pitch of an at bat, 3 2. Down to third, and he'll do another. The Orioles, of course, have done well against left handers this year. They are 17 and 13 against left handed starters. Much better than last season when they went 19 and 28. Against the lefties, they have generally hit a little better average-wise against left-handers than against righties. Here's the three-two delivery on the way, and that's inside. And he earned that one. First walk. Chen doesn't give up many of them. Lead-off man on. Tuesday, the Orioles open a three-game series against the Red Sox, and every Tuesday is Ollie's Bargain Night, presented by Ollie's Bargain Outlet. All upper reserve seats, just $9 in advance. Back the birds and have a great night out at the yard. 888-848 Bird to go to Orioles.com. Yeah, this will be his 25th start as far as uh, in control one time over two walks. Can't afford to do it. And the pitch is in there for a strike. There's Manny Machado with a five for twelve in his major league career. Runner at first base and nobody out, even with a bag at third, Mustakis. Shadow down to third. That will be a foul ball and a two strike count on the Oriole third baseman. Yeah, he's hit all kinds of pitches. Uh, I was talking to uh, Luke Kochaver and uh, I said, Was that a curveball? He said, No, it was a hanging slider. That was the first home run. And then another slider for a three run home run. Then he hit a curveball off Will Smith for a triple up the gap. That was his first major league hit. And then he ripped a double on a fastball off Mendoza over the bag. So he's hit the full assortment. Goes away and uh, did not go around on it. <laughs> Tim Cheetah, the sign he didn't go around hands on knees. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one and two. Yeah, you would really, with nobody out, like to advance Reynolds. At least get him into scoring position. 
Fouled away. Cat will stay at a ball and two strikes on Machado. Question when he came up, would he be playing every day or not? Answered pretty quickly by the fact he's been swinging a hot bat and taking the uh, job at third base and gotten the plays that need to be made done with. He hasn't been very active down there in the games. By that meaning, he hasn't had to be. But uh, at the plate, he certainly has been active. One ball, two strike out. Throw over again. Trying to keep the double play in order here and keep Reynolds close more than worrying about Reynolds trying to run. They squeeze towards the middle on Machado. What is this about? I mean, we know he's got a lot of stolen bases against him, but Mark Reynolds? I have no idea. I don't know. One and two. And the breaking ball will miss inside. That will even the count up two balls and two strikes. Chen here in this ballpark, of course, he did pitch with the Orioles for two plus years, as we said. He's allowed nine runs over nine innings in two starts here at Camden Yards, has an 0 and 1 record here at Oriole Park. Here's the throw to first base. A lot of excitement here, friends. This portion of our game brought to you by, well, let's see, high IR energy drink. I mean, I know they're on the bench going, what? We're going home tonight. <laughs> throw the ball. Well, yeah, well, throw it over. You throw the first for the guys that are going to run. That went in the gap to right center by Machado. King going back and goodbye. Another one. Unbelievable. Are they calling it a homer or not? Cheater's got his arms out. Well, that it was yeah. not the second base umpire. Yeah. Bill Welke signaled home run, and they're going to talk about well, it. Well, they don't know about it. And. and they better get this right because that hit off the top of the wall and went out of here. That's a home run. And I think they will. Uh, they're going to go look. Yeah. Well, because nobody saw this, and you know it is a glary day. But it looked appeared to me hit the top of the wall and then went off the back wall. They are doing the right thing, and they're going to make sure they get it right. And I'm sure Buck Showalter would say, "Well, I think the right thing is just two-run shot." Manny Machado driving that one right center field and he is really generating some excitement for well, the Orioles. Another thing he's generating is bat speed. Yep. You know again a young hitter. I mean he hit a couple of breaking balls. Ned Yost the opposing manager said well they were mistakes but you still have to hit them. But again watch this. There's the ball. It hits the top of the wall. Hits off the back ball. It's a home run. Yep. They'll get it right. Home run quickly called. They've already got the review done. So Manny Machado has done it again. The rookie delivers yet another homer. That is going to be for Machado number three. RBI six and seven. And the Orioles take a two nothing lead. Well, there's a home run ball. We talked about it. Comes into play already. And that was a bullet. So the Orioles get Chen with a long ball. Here's Andino bunting for a base hit, fouls it off. You know, take a look, and again, this is two strikes, so you're protecting. You're going to use the whole field, which you always tell good hitters. And so right there, there's a target, and it's out over the plate. And the pitch taken, and it is a strike, and the count goes to and two. So Machado now is six for 13 with three home runs and seven RBIs in this series. And Dino is going to go down looking for the first out here in the second inning. The Orioles with 80 of their home runs hit here in this ballpark as they uh, like the opposition taking advantage of Camden Yards. In fact, coming into the game, the Orioles had hit 79, given up 79 at home. Machado, though, gets the 80th home run here at Camden Yards for the Orioles this year. And Chen surrenders his 22nd home run of the season. And Jim said when we opened it up, 
Get two guys who surrender the long ball a lot. And the Orioles strike first with it. Well, when I pitched and a guy took me deep to the opposite field, you kind of tip your hat because he had a good at bat. Now, yeah, he elevated the ball a little bit. It wasn't like it was down and away, but he drilled that ball. And that one in the air left field. Gordon's got Rome near the warning track, and he'll haul it in. And Taylor Teagarden is retired on the long fly ball for the second out of the inning. Yeah, I think he didn't even know that there were only two outs. He thought he threw the ball in the stands. Thought it was the third out. Well, we saw the Orioles. I mean, Buck Showalter in his press conference said, hey, it's not only the physical thing, it's the mental part. And we saw the Orioles start running off the field with only two outs last night. Long nights on the field, short nights sleeping. Right yeah. back for the day. Well, you're right. And last night really was more with that three and a what three hour and nine minute delay. It was more about the mental part of it than physically. Yeah. Like Buck said, hey, we got a nice locker room. We got TVs and play cards. You can watch the Olympics. You can do a lot of things. And wait. Yeah. So it's what's going on in your melon. Today not much. Ground ball to second base. Gets is there. Marquegas will be retired after doubling his first time up. So Manny Machado getting it all done in a hurry delivers his third major league home run gets a review as well and the signal is it's a dinger and an Oriole lead. Mass and brought to you by Verizon Fios. Introducing Verizon Fios Quantum Speed, internet twice as fast as anything America's ever seen. By Hyundai's Summer Drive Sales Event, now through September 3rd. And by Antwerpen Auto. When Jack says yes, you pay less. At Antwerpen Hyundai, Nissan, Toyota, at Howard County Auto Park, visit JackSaysYes.com. Hunter with a lead, 2 0. And gets the number nine hitter, 3 for 10 in the series. Leading it off for the Royals. Drag bunt. And a good one. Base off. That's what he does. And that's now what? Uh, 779 at bats since he had a home run. And Ozzie Smith came all the way from St. Louis yesterday. Former teammate of Eddie Murray. Both in the Hall of Fame. Both uh, played. Uh, grew up together really. I, I think they met each other when they were 9 and 10. He had 28 home runs. In 9,936. At bats, and he's in the Hall of Fame. So you can help a team win without hitting home runs, and that's what Getz has done for this club. That'll be number nine of the infield hit variety for Getz, and now he is always a threat to go. Gordon leadoff batter single his first time up, and will take the pitch for a strike. T Garden behind the plate has had only four chances throwing out to base runners, one for four on the season. Well, let's see what gives here. Not a lot of runners have gone against Tommy Hunter in the starts and relief appearances he's had. The throw over to get Getz back. Well, he does get your attention. Uh, talking about Chris Getz because uh, you know, he stole 21 last year. You know he has speed. A lot of times, managers will not run until you get one out because they'll, as we've talked about many times, 
Uh, give Alex Gordon that hole in the right field. Ground ball right to second base. Andino. Hardy. Double play. Boy, was that turned nicely. And and part of the deal is uh, if you're a second baseman, the ball's hit slowly, come get it. And Robert does a great job of that. Slow, slower infield most of the time. So a nice pitch by Tommy Hunter. He induces the ground ball, and then his infield does the rest of it. Come get it. Little shovel throw. Clear the runner. One pitch, two outs. And Dino kicking it off. And Hardy with a nice turn at second base, as always, gets rid of it in a hurry. Two down, nobody on. Escobar sacrificed by his first time up. Escobar with the 353 average against the Orioles. We showed you on the season. And the 298, very strong year overall. And a real good job at shortstop defensively. And a two strike count. So Hunter throwing some strikes here and getting ahead of the hitters, not giving Escobar an opportunity even to get settled in. Here's the 0-2 pitch to him. Escobar will put it in the air to center McClough. In place. Gets the angle on the sun. Puts it away. No runs. One hit. No errors. Nobody left on base. Victor today. The Orioles will take the season series five games to four. Nine and 28 at Camden Yards. Take a look at Bruce Chen's his numbers of 12 game winner the last uh, two years. Uh, and then so here's your comparison. So the average up, strikeouts up. That's a good thing. Walks down, home runs though. And last year only threw 18 in uh, 155 innings. This year comes in uh, today with 100 and what? Uh, 129 innings. And he's already thrown 22, making now what? 131 innings. So again, it's a lot of times it's not about walking people. It's about being sometimes wild in the strike zone. Hard hit to short, backhanded by Escobar. Hardy is out of there. As Hosmer had to go up off the bag to get it, but gravity got him back in time to get the out. Yeah, he's a big, tall, rangy first baseman, and as is Escobar. So plenty of time, actually. Little Louis Aparicio, so there you up to the second or third floor down to the basement tag the bag. Nate McLeod coming up McLeod with the single his first time up and now a five for nine in the series he showed bunt gets the stock as the third base coming in takes the pitch away though for a ball. Yeah he knows how to get on base and part of the deal is to, to, to show him you'll bunt early in the count so they will play in. He's played a good deal of center field in his career, so getting him out there for Adam Jones in center is not a position that's uh, uncommon to him. One ball, one strike delivery on the way. McLeod will take the breaking ball way outside, and you see Pena there was directing traffic for his pitcher, showing him he wanted that pitch. He said, move it in here so it starts to break here in the middle of the plate rather than outside. That's what he did. In our Olympic bat toss program, McLeod has just won a silver. Well, that's a big time bat toss. Really? 
It is. That's good distance. I haven't seen one. And good tumble. Because yeah, there are many elements of the bat throwing competition. Distance number one and tumble. So let's see. We'll have the uh, the main judge that's in many ways is you from yeah, Maine right. and yeah, Maine we'll judge. take the E off it. Thank you. So, uh, what did you give him? I gave him a 2.0 <laughs> out of three. <laughs> oh, OK. And the play made. <laughs> and McLeod is retired. Two down. Wednesday, the first 10,000 kids, 14 and under. The Orioles Red Sox 705 game. Get an Orioles collectible truck presented by W.B. Mason. Get the kids to the ballpark. Big game. Great night. And something to take home to remember it by. It's 888-848-BIRDORIOLES.COM for tickets. A lot of youngsters here last night and again for the day game today. A lot of folks obviously on vacation this time yeah, of year. Yeah, a lot of people walking downtown early. Ooh, Adam's trying to get that 25th home run. 99 lifetime home runs. 24 of those coming this season for Adam Jones. Here's the 01 delivery. And yeah. just put that one in and missed it on two. Well, 89. And that's what uh, Ned Yost, the skipper, was saying. Throw that fastball with conviction. And there's something to be said about that. To take a look right here. We talked about earlier the ability to, to hit with two strikes. That comes with plate appearances, maturity, experience. Here's the 02 delivery by Chen to Jones. And the other part of the equation is you have to have talent and use it, channel it in the right direction. And me, Adam's doing that? Yes, he is. I'm giving that bat toss, incidentally, a three. Three. Because I'm good. in Arizona, a lot of cactus, you don't see bats very often. Wood, no. I'm going with a three. 0 2 deliveries, take it up high. So if you throw a so wood good. bat that far, yes. Come get up. a three. Yes. Good. So he gets a 2 5 from the coordinated judge's decision. That's good enough for a medal. Here's the 1 2 delivery. Jones to short. Escobar gets the throw down this time in a 1 2 3 inning for Jim. We completed three here at Camden Yards in the uh, closer of the season series against KC. Turning on Thursday, September 6th, it'll be Cal who's going to be honored with the larger than life run sculpture in the new uh, Legends Park area. The gates will open at 5, ceremonies 515. All fans will get the replica Ripken sculpture. So we hope you'll help us honor the Iron Man, and that will be coming up on Thursday, September 6th. Mustagas fouls that one back. Mustagas flying out to center field. Butler. And yeah. Kane do up. You know, I was talking to Kevin Seitzer, who's the hitting instructor for the Royals. I said, uh, it looks like Mike's a little bit late on the fastball. He said, well, they pitch backwards. You know, a lot of fastball counts. Uh, they've changed speeds, done a nice job in this series. Even though he did get two hits on Thursday night in game one. Good young hitter in his 
second year in the big leagues. Former number one draft choice out of California. 0 2 delivery Ooh. to him, and that'll be a pie by Hunter. Tommy has had the leadoff man on in uh, two of the three innings so far. 65% retired in the year. 45 on the pitch counts. Mustakas, the 1 2 delivery to him, and that's going to be foul back. And Hunter gets it to one and two. Orioles come in uh, six and a half games behind the Yankees who won uh, yesterday. They're losing big uh, to Toronto today. They are also out of first place in the wild card race now. Here's the one two delivery and that's taken down low. But those teams in the wild card race are going to go back and forth on a daily basis. There's so little separating them. Yeah the Rays as you mentioned uh, they're on a mission. They've won five in a row. Price one is 15th. And they have passed the Orioles now for second place in the Eastern Division as it's now the Yankees first. The Rays are in second place then the Orioles half game behind them. Longest win streak Tampa Bay's got it with five in the American League. Toronto's got the longest losing streak in the league also at five. That ball's going to be pulled near the line and goodbye home run off the fair pole Mike Moustakis delivers the long ball leading off the fourth inning and that will put the Royals on the board and make it a two to one ball game. Yeah he has swung through a lot of high fastballs but that one he's able to get on top that's what he did on uh, Thursday night with a couple of line drives. So a lot of hard stuff 88 to 92 nothing to slow the bat down and boy you don't expect that ball to get hit. But he was all over it and then right off the pole. The Mustagas fits at number 18. Mm -hmm. And these two pitchers are continuing what they've done all year, and that's surrender the long ball for Tommy Hunter now. That's going to be number 27. He had uh, entering today 26, tied with Phil Hughes, a couple behind Santana for the most home runs allowed in the American League. Now he's in second place by himself. Billy Butler and the pitch will be taken outside. Yeah, he just had a home run swing on the first fastball. So Butler with uh, four home runs against the Orioles this year. Yeah. And a shot up the middle for a base hit by Butler. Yeah, you cannot stay. Well, you can. And you can't stay in the middle of the plate and get him out. He has proven that. Right center, left center. One of the great back up the middle with power type of hitters, and he's done it. I mean, this is not like it's, it's it happened yesterday. You have to be able to crowd Billy Butler to get him out and have a good breaking ball. So the Orioles now uh, Hunter's got to bear down with a runner at first potential tying run in this 2-1 game. Royals four hits to the Orioles three. Grounding out first time up. Lorenzo Cain will foul that pitch off. Home run wise by Hunter of the 27 13 have been given up here at Camden Yard. So we split them up pretty much right down the middle home and road as far as home runs given. Tommy trying to get out of a three game losing streak last three decisions have been losses against Tampa Bay Oakland and Cleveland. He's not had a win since July 18 against the Twins. Inside corner strike good one and the count will go to 0 and 2 on Kane. I guess uh, you could also I mean of course he did beat Minnesota because he only gave up a run only gave up three runs in seven innings not a bad performance struggled against Oakland and then pitched really good against him. Oh two pitch inside. And the count goes to one and two but you have to be able to and this is what Miguel Gonzalez did on Friday night you have to be able to pitch to both sides of the plate you have to show them you can get something else other than a fastball or something in the fastball velocity over. You got to be able to do that all night long and otherwise they're going to stop start eliminating pitches and that's what they've done second time through the order they're going OK not really pitching in he, he, he won't, he's more comfortable away we'll look away. And when you get a good a young fastball hitting team and that's what the Royals are. They're going to be in trouble. 2 2 delivery on the way and reached and fouled that one back. And that'll hold the count of two balls and two strikes on Kane with Butler on at first base. Last night, four home runs. 
by the Royals tied a season high in a single ball game Gordon getting his first multi homer game. It's been the story of this series the non homering Royals. Homering. Two ball two strike count on Kane. Hunter's delivery to him that is outside and the count goes to three and two. Kane's got a little bit of that Jeter lean across the yeah. plate move in him. He follows that pitch outside almost standing on his tiptoes by the time he doesn't swing at it and watches it go by. Yeah, I think they go down to Tampa Bay later in the year. He, 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 he's exactly like George Hendricks, who was a terrific player who's the first base coach. Tall, lanky, kind of wraps the bat there. Back inside on him, fouls it off, sending up some dust, and the count stays three balls and two strikes on him. Kane and then Frank Gore do up for the Royals. Short lead at first. 3 2 in the end of right field. Going back, Marquecas near the wall, and he's got it. Hauls it in. One step shy. And that'll be out number one. Now, Gold Glover in 2011. Glary Day, but he's great sense of where the wall is. Makes a nice play. Otherwise, it's a double. Butler does not run well over first base, but most likely going to be a second and third with a one run lead if he doesn't catch that ball. And that will bring up Jeff Francoeur. Francoeur drew the only walk surrendered by Hunter so far in the ball game. And he'll take the first pitch fastball for a strike. Good ballpark for Francoeur. Lifetime 352. Here at Camden Yards, along with a total of three home runs in this ballpark. Hunter with one down. Here's the 0 1 delivery. And lofted the other way foul. Francoeur among the league leaders in the assist department. He's got 12 now. One of the consistently strong arms over the last half dozen years in uh, Major League Baseball in the outfield. 0 2 count. The cloth will shade him to right a bit in center. And the pitch will miss. Humidity down today. Well, the temperature is up to 85 in the 90s all day yesterday and during the night last night with the showers coming and going. One of those uh, rare, pleasant days in August in Baltimore. Here's the one two delivery. Now they're making them work because again it's a two to one game and. With, uh, Jeff Franco you know you're one swing away from hitting him going deep. You have to be able to he's a much better fastball hitter. Even though he did hit a double off of Wei and Chen poked at the right field down the right field line on Thursday. And the pitch count elevated here. Ooh. That one broke at the last minute, almost caught him on the uh, hand. And a three ball, two strike count from Hunter. So, with one away and a non speedy runner, Butler at first base. Frank Torr will work with the 3 2 infield at double play depth here. They can get the ground ball. Popped him up. Back behind the screen, it stays full. That might be coming in our booth. I mean, quite straight down, but. But I know you would save it. I would. But absolutely. As soon as I came up from under the counter. <laughs> put see if I was all right. I put the bandage yeah, you, on. He looked to see if I, I was. Do still. everything I could yeah. to assist you after being injured. Three-two delivery on the way. There goes the bat and the ball, and it's a base hit. Just out of the reach of Hardy while the bat like a spear stuck in the ground beyond third base. So Francoeur gets the single first and second one out. Now take a look right here. It's up and he kind of muscles it into left. But in this inning Tommy uh, Hunter has just lost his location. So again you can see in the middle of the plate. Again the bat's so much lighter now. Um, but again you see the strength. So well, there he goes. 
They'll like that. Break a bat. Base hits worth a bat. So in a one run ball game with the Orioles on top two to one. Now being out hit by the Royals five three. Here's Hosmer. Strikeout victim his first time up. Royals have gone 0 for 2 today with runners in scoring position. They get another shot at it here with one out. 26 pitches have been thrown this inning by Tommy Hunter, up to 68 for a total in the ballgame. And the 0 1 delivery had to rip that one foul back to two strike count. Royals have been one of the better hitting teams in the American League with runners in scoring position as a team. They are fifth at 266. Chance here with Butler who had the single and Frank Cor the single. 0 2 delivery. Up and in on him. Foul back again. Showed you how few walks this team picks up, and you watch them, you can see why yeah, they yeah. just—they aren't going up there thinking about walks. Well, and also, I, you know, Hosmer hit 293 last year. Slow start this year, and again, a lot of times young hitters they don't realize that walks get you better pitches to hit. Away to him. So you can see Tommy doing everything. He just again—he does he hasn't thrown many changeups. He's thrown a couple of good breaking balls. That will slow the bat down, but. Through the first, what, three and plus games, these guys aren't missing too many fastballs. One ball, two strike count. Only one away. And that's going to miss. Two and two. See, and, and that's a great approach. You could see him, and, oh, are we going to go back in with a cutter? Or am I going to hit the outside corner? But the difference sometimes with having success or failure, do you hit that corner? So again, 95. I mean, he's throwing the ball great, but the command is gone in this inning. 2-2, two, two, and he misses again. Full count. So that was a backdoor cutter that he just couldn't quite get on top. So the runners taking a look over to third, see whether Ned Yost wants them moving or not here. They don't have good speed in the lead runner of Butler. Three ball, two strike count, one down. And the runner's not moving, and the pitch up high, and he walked it. And the bases are loaded here in the fourth inning with one away in an inning that started with the home run by Moustakis. So the first visit to the mound. Rickett Air on his way out with Pena coming up with the sacks full and one away. The Orioles getting the lead in the ball game in the home run by Machado is third in the second. Good for two. Kansas City back with him with Stakas lead off home run in this inning and now have loaded him up and that will get Ayala up in the bullpen. Well yeah you get the off day tomorrow. What did Buck say today. Buck Showalter the Orioles skipper the Orioles will have played 30 games in 31 days. So he's proud of him but he's also understands the import of this game. Need to get a win. Can't let it get out of hand. So Pena will move in. One for two with the bases loaded for him this season. And obviously a very important at bat. You're in the fourth inning. Yeah. Timeout taken with the door open out in center field. Bullpen door gets shut. And we're ready to go. Butler, Francoeur, Hosmer, the base runner. Yeah, need a double play ball. Outside on the off-speed pitch, ball one. Payne has played in uh, 51 games, only 158 at bats compared with 420, 430 for most of the regulars. Couple of home runs, though, 20 RBIs. Not speedy, has grounded into six double plays. Yeah, Hunter's not getting it in the strike zone at all. No place to put him on a 2 0 count. No, you really do have to trust your stuff. And, you know, Tommy's a, a guy that, you know, he likes to pinpoint his stuff, cutters in, fastballs away, and he's just lost that feel. And it, it's part of pitching. So throw it for the middle. It's not going to go there. You haven't been able to make your pitches. There you go. Ball in the air to left field. Ford going over to the line, tagging up at third base will be Butler. Ford's got it. Throw will come all the way through and almost, but missed the cutoff, man. So 
The runners will move up. Sack fly for Pena. Ball game tied at two. Fran Ford to third. Hosmer to second. Yeah, so there's a tying run, and you know why Lou Ford does it. But if the throw's a little bit lower, maybe you get the third out. And again, he just had to throw a strike. He does, and Pena able to get the bat on it. So right here, if you throw it a little bit lower, then you just take the out at second or third, and you're out of the inning. Now all of a sudden the third and fourth runner in scoring position. And so again the, the throw beat him. Yep. If he's able to come up with it, it just short off him. Uh, Taylor Teagarden is going to be able to tag and, and make the tag. 21 RBIs Pena. That is a fair ball. Nice play again by Reynolds. And will get the out. As Getz is retired and for the second time in this ball game, Mark Reynolds at first base has made a big defensive play. On the Sunday afternoon, Tommy Hunter looking to pick up his fifth win. A couple of walks, a couple of strikeouts. Reynolds at first base, two good plays against a former teammate on the mound. Bruce Chen, the 35-year-old left-hander, Machado delivered yet another home run to put two on the board. That's his third home run of his young major league career, but Kansas City has responded, tied the ball game up, and it's 2-2. So Chen. Will face Ford, Reynolds, and Machado do up in the fourth inning. Two five and zero oh for the Royals. Two three and zero oh for the Orioles. Four left by KC. Two by the O's so far in the ball game. And a strike taken. No missed. Ford flied out to right field. His first time up. Yeah, veteran player. You know, had a chance to actually during one of the many uh, rain delays last night with the cells coming in and out, talking to him, and you know he had a. Uh, Really nice 2004. That's a long time ago. And I said, What happened? He said, Well, I hurt my knee, went to Japan, played in the independent league. And he was one of those guys that when he, and again, when I talk about a nice year, he had 31 doubles, he had 15 home runs, he almost hit 300, great on base percentage. He said, But I was never considered a real prospect. And I was always one of those fringe guys. So you hope those fringe guys can help you uh, get to the postseason. And uh, he's gone as Chen will record the strikeout against him. Let's take a look at our AT&T mobility trivia fact. O's have scored two or fewer runs while Tommy Hunter has been in a ball game in 10 of his last 15 starts. And they've got two on the board so yeah, far. Yeah, so uh, not a lot of room for error. Four strikeouts picked up by Chen in the ball game. Reynolds drew a walk and scored his first time up. Chen with the Orioles in 04 through 06. 115 and lost 18 at one season of 13 and 10 with the O's, his best year. And the next year was when Leo Mazzoni came over. He went 0, 0 and 7. 13 and 10 one year. I was here. Next year, 
383. Incredibly low ERA for pitching in this ballpark. Next year, 0 and 7 with a 6.93 ERA. A considerable difference there. Yeah. Escobar at short. He's got it. Reynolds is retired. Here comes Machado. And the fans will be applauding again. He is making some noise with that bat. Delivering the home run. They had it under review to make sure indeed it bounced off that back wall. It did. And he's got his third home run. Two RBIs on that at bat. And just an incredible start for him now with three homers. Seven runs batted in in his first four major league ball games. He's picked up six hits in 13 at bats. Kansas City will remember it. Well, it begs the question why do they wait so long to bring him up? <laughs> oh, here we go. No, I'm okay, you know what I'm saying. I know, yes. I know. That's the eternal. <laughs> if he'd gone 0 for 12, then what is he up here yeah, for? Exactly. <laughs> Such is the nature of the beast. Here's the 1 1 delivery and the breaking ball taken inside and a two ball, one strike count. Well, Tim Collins got him out on a good change up there, a little lefty that uh, is leading the. American League in strikeouts. And Machado takes that one towards the gap in left center. It's playable though. Gordon is over and he's done it. And that will do it. Three up and uh, three down. That's going to be eight in a row retired by Bruce Chen. Ball game tied. AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. And by Hyundai's Summer Drive sales event, now through September 3rd. Here Thorne, Jim Palmer, back here at Camden Yards on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. Ball game tied at 2-2. The Orioles have the edge all time against the Royals. 253 to 194. Also the edge here at Camden Yards where the Orioles have won 55 and lost 33 over the years. Yeah I played on a team that beat the Royals 23 consecutive mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. We were even amazed. Almost by accident. Well when one or two. whatever we needed. If they we needed a bad base running play they dial it up if they needed somebody to throw a ball away they throw a ball away home run. They throw a home run. Here's Alex Gordon. I mean, one of the great base runners of uh, that era was Bert Campanaris, who was a terrific shortstop in Kansas City. And then they would go to, you know, would go to Oakland, and he tried to steal third, two runs down, with two outs in the ninth, got thrown out to end the game. So that's how you get those. It's a timely <laughs> move. Yep. Wow. Well, I mean, we're just sitting there going, how did Thank that? You. Yeah, how did that happen? Two ball, one strike count. Gordon, a single is hit into a double play. Six for 15. There. And he's got another one. Well, he is really, you know, I saw him today. I said, Aren't you tired running around the bases? He's hit not one bit. Because, again, I mean, this is a guy that, you know, he, he's hit home runs in four out of his last nine games after he hit only five in his first 103. 
One of 207 at bats without a home run, and all of a sudden now, ball's flying off his bat. He said, "Maybe I'm getting more aggressive. I don't know." Whatever it is, but I, that at bat was about staying inside the ball, not rolling over because what a horrible pitch! A little cutter in on his fist. He just stayed inside and shot it back up the middle. And that will bring up Escobar. There goes Gordon. That's a hit and run, perfectly placed. Escobar will pick up the base hit over to third goes Gordon. They didn't waste any time on that one. The only problem Gordon had was trying to stay out of the way of the ball. Well Gary part of uh, preparation is your scouts and Tommy Hunter even though he was wild last inning he's a strike throwing machine. He was a high ball pitcher right there. That's what uh, you were talking about Gordon dodging it and then by starting the runner if you're dead Joe's you know the guy's going to throw strikes you know you have a hitter that can handle the bat. And that's why they have the first and third. It's going to be some kind of ball club if they get any kind of starting pitching down the road. Yep. They've got seven hits on the board against the Orioles now, and is Mustakas again a home run his last time up? First and third, nobody out, 2 2 ball game. Kansas City out hitting the Orioles 7 3 now. And for the Royals, 0 for 3 with runners in scoring position in the ball game. Chance for them to take the lead. Here's the 1 0 delivery. Throttle back a bit on it. 1 and 1. Yeah, you don't want to be throwing breaking balls belt high, though. And if you're, uh, again, if you're their manager, Ned Yost, you got to say these guys have made some nice adjustments, and that's what you want from young players. Second time through the order, now they, you know, they, the third time through the order, they've, they made adjustments. They have figured Tommy Hunter out, and everybody figures you out. But again, you can have a lot of success if you make your pitches. And if you're not, and we saw it with Chris Tillman last night, we saw it with Wei and Shen. I mean, they they came out and got four of the quickest runs you've ever seen. Gordon going nowhere at third. One ball, one strikeout. And that one towards second base. Andino's got it. Hardy won really over to first. They get the big double play. Kansas City will take the lead on it as Gordon will score. No RBI. And it is a three to two ball game, but there are two outs. Now, Tommy Hunter does a nice job because what he does is he keeps him out of the big inning. But they do get that run. So a three two ball game, two down bases empty in the fifth. And that will bring up Butler. Billy Butler striking out his first time up, getting a single, scoring in the fourth inning. Pena's got a sack fly in the game. Now that run scores on the double play, and Mustakas has the home run, accounting for the three for Kansas City. Butler with the 24 homers, a new career high. Previous high was 21, which he picked up in 2009. Over the last three years, going backwards, home runs have been 19, 15, and 21. This year, each is going to add to a new total for him. In the air and a busted bat towards center, and he's got a base hit. So Butler gets his second hit of the ball game. Three hits in the inning for the Royals. Our PNC minor league report brought to you by PNC for the achiever in you. Eduardo Rodriguez with Delmarva. Last five has gone three and one with a sparkling 1.8. And uh, strikeout to walk ratio that's tremendous. Five and six on the year, 3 2 9, 19 starts, 19 years old from Venezuela. Really high on this kid. Two down, here's Lorenzo Cain. He is grounded out, flied out, takes the pitch away, runner at first. Eight hits off Tommy Hunter. Orioles a tough lineup. There are no soft outs really in this lineup. He told you the bottom part of the lineup's been real good against the Orioles in this series, and that's legitimate when you got guys like Getz and Hosmer and Frank Core hitting in the bottom third. Yeah, Frank Core coming off one of his career years, even though he's been a little bit more of a struggle for him. Signed through next year. 1 1 delivery. That's what Hunter's tried to do is get inside on him and a two ball, one strike count. Which he's been able to do, but for balls. 
I mean, and if you're hitting properly and you know his strengths to the other side of the plate, which is the glove side, you take that pitch until you get to two strikes. Two one delivery. And there's a, an inside strike. Good pitch. He's looking away and he takes it because he made a good pitch. Fastball command. Two balls, two strikes. Butler off first, two down. And a ground ball to short. Hardy's got a force at second. He'll go to Andino to get it. A run in, three hits. No errors. The base runner left on. Kansas City goes on top by one. Down over the last couple of innings. Plus, back here with Jim Palmer, I'm Gary Thorne. The Orioles trying to get another win off a, a lefty here, and really, Jim, in this, they do not want to go one and three against the Royals. No, and uh, but the other side is the Royals want to go three and one against them, and they came in playing well. Uh, they, you know, one made it three in a row because they won big time uh, two of the three games. So, got to score some runs. You're going to beat the Royals today. You're going to have to put some runs on the board. Bruce Chan, he's pitched well, you know, other than the home run to Machado, he's gotten out of jams. Uh, he he had hadn't won in seven starts. So this is a guy that you better beat him, and you better beat him early because if you get to the bullpen, all of a sudden you're going to have the same problem. I, I, I think with both of these managers, whether it's Ned Yost or Buck Showalter, they're trying to win today because this is a big game, and it's a much bigger game for the Orioles because they're in the pennant race. And uh, with Chan, he's not going to give you many walks, so you really have to come up with a plan on how you're going to hit against him. Only 1.2 uh, free passes per nine innings coming into the ball game, and that is six best in the American League, and he's only given up one walk in this game. Robert Andino leads it off against him and will take the pitch for a strike. Andino batting eighth. Struck out his first time up, followed by T Garden and then Marquecas. Here's the 0 1 delivery to him, and a swing and a miss 0 and 2. And he's just going to kind of purr along unless you uh, have some better at bats. And Robert over swinging, not playing as much as he did last year. Files that one back into the seats. And Dino 0 for his last 10. Including an 0 for 4 in the limited at bats that he's had in this series. And his average has dropped down to 224 on the year. Here's the 0 2 delivery. And that's going to go right into the glove of Francoeur. And one away here in the fifth. Mid Atlantic Sports Report is back tomorrow, 5 to 7. Tom Davis, Dave Johnson, Mel Anton, and Phil Wood will have all the latest Oriole news, notes, and headlines from around the majors as well. That's going to be tomorrow at 5 right here on Masson. Day off for the Orioles, and then the Red Sox will be in for the three game set starting on Tuesday. All night games. Way in Chen, Josh Beckett, the first one. Miguel Gonzalez, Aaron Cook, the second. Chris Tillman, Clay Buckholtz, the schedule starters in game three. And the pitch is a high strike call to Taylor Teagarden. Jim mentioned Taylor Teagarden, not a lot of chances, not a lot of hits. Two of the three, though, have gotten it done for the Orioles. And you know, off of Joel Peralta last weekend. You know, I didn't broadcast that game, but I'm sitting at home watching it and I'm going. Peralta's throwing 89 and throwing high fastballs. And Taylor finally caught up one, hit it up the gap. 
Orioles win. And they're all big wins at this point in the season. Back. Even yeah. They win. yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's that's the difference is when you play on teams that win, you realize that a game in April is as important as one in August or September. And so again, for the Orioles now for the first time in August in years, I'm going back what 15 years, these games mean something. Oh, nice little Swing on a miss. Yeah, well, change of speeds and you don't play a lot. Hitting's timing. And Taylor Rip doesn't have it here. I mean, this is a good curveball, and he's able to get ahead. So you have to protect the part of the plate. But it can't throw it any better than this outside corner. Five strikeouts picked up by Chen. Two down, nobody on. He's retired the side in order each of the last two. And Nick Marquez, who had a double in the first inning and is grounded out, stands in. Two down, nobody on. And the pitch is there for a strike. Orioles, if they uh, play 500 baseball the rest of the way, will have 85 wins. The number for the second wild card spot is going to be somewhere between probably 84 and 89. As far as catching the Yankees is concerned, which of course is what the players and managers have to talk about, they are six and a half games out. They are not going to catch the Yankees in all likelihood. It would take a real Yankee downturn. Not that it can't happen, especially with. Yankees struggling trying to keep their players on the field with Sabathia going on the DL yesterday and continued injuries and Andy Pettit has had a setback of about 10 days in his attempted comeback. So they continue to have to push some buttons too. 2 1 delivery breaking ball is going to be taken down low. 3 and 1. Yeah, and those are all I guess valid points and then again you just hope that that somehow this team will play like they did a couple of years ago where the pitching gets better the hitting get better. You know they've already taken steps for the defense by bringing Machado up. But there have been guys that have played better in a lot of the facets of the games are struggling and it just can you do it over the last six weeks of the season. Can you do it where every game means something. And that's what we're going to have to see. That's a great thing about this game. Three two delivery on the way. Long fly ball right field and goodbye home run. Ball game tied up. As Nick Marcakis delivers the shot. That's going to be number 13 for the Orioles right fielder in a 3-3 game. Bruce goes boom. There we go. Throw a double. Let it off on the first pitch of the game. Waffle one into the gap. And And he will put it the game back all even. Well, the Orioles two home runs in the ball game, Machado and Marquegas. We'll take a look right here inside middle. This is really how this whole series started. That's what Alex Gordon did off Wayne Jen. Similar pitch off another Chen. And the same result. Nine of the 13 home runs by Marquegas have come here at Camden Yards where the Orioles have now put up 81 home runs on the season 81 of the 143 that they've hit. And we are back to a tie ball game. Yeah that ball probably going out of most ballparks. We've seen some fly balls to left power alley a little bit shorter in left field here. Pops that one up paying you back. Tough catch nice play. Actually had to lean over the railing a little bit to put it away. So Chen had retired a nine in a row before the swing of the bat by Marquecas with two down here in the fifth. Puts it into the right field seats and ties the ball game up at three.
has. And again, you know, Tommy Hunter, he throws a lot of strikes. Uh, Hardy up the middle. And then right here, that's a very, very big play right there because Getz sets it over the bag. Reynolds is over there. Otherwise, there was runners at second and third. So, again, instead of being a 3-3 ball game, you know, we see. And the one thing about Mark Reynolds, he, obviously the bat not where you'd like to have it. Anybody he, he, talking about himself or fans or, or his, his teammates, but he has really well played well defensively lately. So again, we told you off day tomorrow, and uh, you like where you are. Tommy Hunter keeps them in the ball game, and they'll now go to the bullpen. Ayala pitching very well as of late. Uh, again, that, only that little one period right around the All Star break where he struggled, but the master of. Uh, Deception in the sense where you don't see the ball very well. You talk to hitters. And the key for him, for Luis, is to, to get ahead so he can get them to expand out of the strike zone. And again, this is a very free swinging ball club. And there is Tommy Hunter's line. So Hunter is non decisioned in the ball game, leaving with a tie to 3 3. And here in the sixth, Ayala is going to work to Francoeur, Hosmer, and Pena. Francoeur against Ayala, one for eight. He's picked up a single in this ball game and has drawn a walk. And goes to short. Hardy, look at the hop that one took. Stayed with it. And got him. Yeah. Hardy's Boom. going down. The ball's going up. Yeah, I'm thinking when Machado hit those uh, breaking balls, what Joe Garagiola used to call them room service curveballs, kind of hover right there to hit. That's what that hop does. Right to the glove. And then the accuracy of uh, J.J. Hardy. Does he ever throw a ball away? Not very often. Not very often. Here's Hosmer, a walk and a strikeout. Close ball game with a couple of ball clubs who are ringing it out of the yard. We'll see if the homer continues to play a big role in this game. Pitch is taken for a strike. Well, the Orioles have won the last, I don't know if this will be a one run game, what, the last 11 one run games, 22 and 6 on the year. The 0 1 delivery by Ayala, and he wasn't even close yeah. catching up on that one. It got by him on 2. Good velocity, good movement, good location. Okay, so now he gets ahead and he can pitch out of the zone. I hope that Tosner and Eric will chase. See, the thing about Taylor uh, Teagard, and I've you know, seen him year, play in years past, and he had the uh, the back problems early on. Watching him catch early in spring training, he does present you a very nice target. So if Matt Wieters is getting the uh, the afternoon or night off, this is not a bad guy to throw to. Ayala will make the play, and they're two down. Next fireworks night here at Oriole Park, scheduled for Friday, August 24. The Jays are in town for a 7:05 game. Hope you'll bring uh, family, friends up, come enjoy a ball game and the great fireworks display to follow. Get tickets in advance, 888-848-BIRD, or you can go to Orioles.com. Two away, nobody on. Here's Pena, robbed of a hit, and a fine play his first time up in the second inning as Hardy and Reynolds combined on that scoop play. Got a sack fly in an RBI in the fourth. And will take the pitch down low for a ball. Oriole bullpen. That has been the uh, shining monument to their season all year long. A great consistency, even though they've obviously had a couple of valleys along the way. It hasn't been very deep. Yeah, the orange curtain. Second in ERA. Second fewest hits allowed. Per nine innings pitched for the Orioles bullpen. And they've done a good job. Their walk to strikeout ratio is the second best in the American League. Pena with a 1 1. Ayala snags it. 1 2 3 inning as he sets him down. The ball game to be decided as we go to the bottom of the six, tied at 3 3.
Nothing. Manny Machado, third home run. In the last four games, uh, Mike Mustakis, Orioles leading 2 0, uh, hits one off the foul pole for his 18th home run of the year. And then Orioles down 3 2. Nick Markakis going deep. With a, with a double home run for Nick Markakis. Machado again with that uh, one for two with that third home run in his uh, brief four game career. Chen against Hunter. Chen still out there. Tommy Hunter keeps him in the game. And. Uh, what the Orioles can do against Bruce Chen. You know, they're there he is. At least from a position standpoint, the Orioles' number one prospect in the big leagues. Orioles will bat here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. McLeod, Jones, and Ford up against the left hander Chen. McLeod with a single, one for three in the ballgame. And we'll start with the pitch outside for a ball. Speed recognized when Stagas moves in at third base. 1 0 delivery to him, and that will be in there for a strike. Chen's been efficient enough to have that arm still pretty lively. 77 pitches thrown so far in the ballgame. 1 1 delivery, and there's a breaking ball that doesn't, hangs way up there, and a two ball, one strike count. Chen looking for his third win lifetime against the Orioles and his first this year. 0 and 1 this year, 2 and 2 lifetime. Here's the 2 1 delivery. And the first base and foul. Over the screen to hold the count at two and two. And you think about Bruce Chen, and I just remember when he was coming through the minor leagues, uh, started out in Atlanta. I mean, he was 59 and 40, he had those incredible years. A ball, 12 and 7, 13 and 7. I said, oh, the next Tom Glavin. Count of corn to center, hauled in by Kane. McLeod retired, one away in the sixth inning. Those extra post game tune in brought to you by PNC Bank for the Achiever in you. Jim and Rick are standing by, sleeping comfortably in the couches provided for extra inning ball games or ball games that start late the night before. Black will have the press conference. Talk about uh, not only today, but the upcoming series against the Red Sox, player interviews, and more all coming up. Yeah, he, uh, Jim Hunter had the, uh, you know, the HD makeup with the, the, the Mr. It brings the make out. Of him. He's got this mister and he's spraying himself before they went on camera. What? It's not that hot. <laughs> and I'm going. He says it works. And it does. Got to get. Got to get myself a mister. Oh Lord. We're hearing Buck back now from Toronto. Then we can have the big sexy hairspray can, and now we'll have the big mister to join it. We'll have our own lineup of goods here. For television makeup. Two ball, one strike count on Adam Jones. He has struck out and grounded out. Well, it is an art form. It certainly is. And we certainly aren't very good at it. No. Well, no. <laughs> Here's the 2 1 pitch inside. Oh, there's the hot zone. And actually, I mean, that's how you hit close to 300. You don't have a lot of uh, holes in your swing. And also, again, we told you about hitting with two strikes. And there's the changeup. Really hasn't pulled the string that slowly that often. I, you know, that's 78. We've seen 77. A lot of the changeups, though. The fastball's been a little bit crisper, 87, 88. Three, two delivery from Chen to Jones, and that'll be foul back. But again, 89 on occasion. So. Just a little extra, and he's pitched better. At my point, I, I saw him early on, and he just assumed left-hander coming up in the Braves, and then Chris Gladwin went on to win 305 games. And Chen has had to reinvent himself. Sidearms, righties, drops down on lefties. 
wins 13 games. Next year's goes 0 and 7. Goes to the minors. And Adam Jones will pick up the walk. That is only the second walk surrendered, and it comes as one away here in the sixth inning. Take a look at our notebook here. Washington, what a year. They've now won eight in a row, season high. They are 28 games above 500. If they play 500 the rest of the way, they're going to win 95 games. Derek Jeter's joined Hank Aaron, the only two players in history with at least 150 hits in 17 consecutive years. An interesting note out of the Boston Herald today, Bobby Valentine, regarding what's going on with the Red Sox, the continued endless discussions about how it's going there. This is the quote from the Herald today. Most people recognize Valentine is getting screwed and they feel bad for him. He's been carved up by whiny players and ownership is listening to those whiny players. If you're a Red Sox fan you should be nauseated by the news players are hitching up their diapers and going up the back stairs to whine to the owners. End of quote from the Herald. Well, they're ahead 15 to 1 today, so maybe yes, they've they read are. that article. And Lester, who has had a horrible, a horrid year, as has Beckett, who's going to pitch here on Tuesday. Listen, they've had injuries. The players win and lose games. Was it Terry Francona's fault they went 7 and 20 in September? Or was it the players' fault? We all know that answer. They know the answer. So. That's the first time though the players have been taken to task I think in the press though Bobby Valentine's the one who's been taken to task uh, but the Herald article really just goes after the players and it it said yeah Valentine's a little wacky at times and not the easiest guy to deal with but so we'll see players say they never read it they all read it. They all heard it. Well, all I know is that uh, the way they played in September got their manager fired. Yep. And it's they as simple that. as that, yes. That'll be popped up in the air by Lou Ford. A strikeout victim his last time up and 0 for 2 in the ballgame. You know, and of course, everything is amplified up there. Apparently, John Lackey recovering from Tommy John. You know, drinking a beer in the locker room on the road. Like that's the first time that's ever happened. <laughs> If you're playing well, or if they played well in September, nobody would have cared about the beer and the chicken. <laughs> the 0-2 delivery on the way. I mean, Earl Weaver was here for the Eddie Murray thing. He looked down the bench one day, and there's nobody there. You know, Terry Crowley and I are playing a little uh, basketball in the, by the bat rack. You know, Merv Rutman's in his office with his feet up watching the thing. <laughs> and we won 109 games that year. You know, so if you play well, it kind of solves all the problems. That's what the Red Sox need to do. One ball, a two strike count. Breaking ball away. Chris Valentine made the comment first of this weekend to last week that the Red Sox are going to be in the playoffs. He said, We're still good enough. I think we're still going to be there in the end. They got a lot of ground to make up, but uh, that double wild card thing is going to keep a lot of possibilities open that weren't there in past years. Two ball, two strike count for the Orioles. So the potential go ahead run at first Adam Jones one down. Chen who's uh, all day been throwing over whether it's a run situation or not continues to do so here in the sixth inning. Well Adam at least uh, Adam's the guy that runs for the Orioles not a lot but he does have 11 steals and caught six times and a big lead. 2 2 delivery to Ford check swing in the dirt and he goes. Nope. <laughs> Tim Cheater, as we said, has his own signs down there when he's asked. Once it was on his knees. Tim has changed it up, though. This time it's a shake of the head. No, that's not even close. So why even? He's going, I'm not, I'm not going to even respond to that. <laughs> he is the crew chief, by the way. <laughs> well, he had a busy night last night. And a good guy. <laughs> Three ball, two strike count. And a timeout taken by the catcher. Pena asked for the timeout at the plate. Well, I, I can't imagine that Adam's not going to be running here. All he has to do is make sure that Chen goes home and not to first. Stay out of the double play. And uh, again, if if Pena comes up, it'll be ball four. But he doesn't go. And that one is inside. So the Orioles, an unusual back-to-back -back walk off Chen here in the sixth inning, two on, one down. Take a look at our inside the numbers brought to you by Kia Motors to learn more visit Kia.com. Well talking about the Red Sox you look ahead 
David Ortiz who has not been playing six in the American League 316 batting average. They have lost four of their last five. They're winning big today. Twelve games out though in the East and Gonzalez 31 RBI since the All Star break the most in the American League. So that will do it for Chen. The left hander will leave the ball game. Uh, he's not going to have a chance to win it. Could be the loser as he's going to be responsible for the two walks. Jones and Ford who are on. Unable to hold that lead in this tight ball game, and now we'll see whether or not to, either of the two on will be charged against him. So Lewis uh, Coleman comes on, and uh, out of LSU, Ben McDonald is doing some radio. They were touching base. Uh, one inning on Friday, uh, and again, if you look at his numbers, very, very good at home. Struggles on the road. So, and again, when I mean struggle, he struggles. ERA uh, almost seven runs a game. But again, kind of a uh, side armor, almost under armor. And you can see lefties more home runs, but uh, when you consider his arm angle, actually, he's done a pretty good job against lefties, only hitting 170. First and second, only one away. Mike Reynolds up. He has walked and popped out. Coleman out of Mississippi, where he's born and raised in that state, attended LSU. Had a great. Uh, Season there, second and wins his senior year when he went 14 and 2 with LSU. And now we're not getting the signs down with Pena, so they will have a meeting. <laughs> Seesaw ball game. Each of these teams trying to come away with a deciding win in this four game set and it's not been easy. Reynolds and the pitch is down low for a ball. Each team four chances and only one hit combined as you saw there with runners in scoring position in the game. Reynolds and 0 for 2 off Coleman lifetime. 1 0 delivery. 2 0. So Coleman, this is going to be the one he's not going to want to give in, obviously, to Reynolds, but this may be the pitch to hit in this at bat. Jones off second, 2 0 delivery. Mm. And get out of the way. Fouls it back to and one. Now well, you know why Ned Yost brought in Coleman because again he gets righties out. Mark Reynolds only 188 against right-handers and didn't mean to swing. But when you're struggling offensively, you don't see the ball well. You start the bat earlier. Otherwise, you're just getting out of the way of that pitch. He's up and in, way up and in. Runners off first and second, the two on delivery, Reynolds. 
We'll even the count up in the foul ball of two balls and two strikes. Well, you play Mark Reynolds for these moments that you just hope fly ball hitter. It'll get one up in the air. Ball carrying. And then all of a sudden. You'll have a nice lead. Now whether he can do that or not. That's what he did last year. 20 home runs the first half 17 the second half. And they play him the pull. Lorenzo Kane way over in left center field. Huge gap out in right center. Even though Fran has come over a little bit. That'll stay foul and will hold the count two balls, two strikes. So he set him up with the inside pitches <laughs> first, and then the last two he's put towards the outside part of the plate. And Mark really having to reach for that one to protect on it and just enough to foul it off. Numbers. Uh, Pretty decent for him compared to the overall 209 batting average much better with runners in scoring position. Now he doesn't cover the outside part of the plate only five hits to the opposite field all season. 2 2 delivery got that one in and is going to pay for it. That's a base hit that will score Jones and the Orioles take the lead four to three an RBI single for Mike Reynolds. Well we talked about earlier that guys that have done things in the past. Uh, again over the next uh, five six weeks need to do it again and there's a perfect example one thing about Mark Reynolds when you get guys in scoring position he's hitting a lot higher than his normal batting average 258 and, and here's a breaking ball that's not down in a way and he is a pull hitter and here comes Adam Jones to give the Orioles the lead and it all happened with back to back walks off a guy that hardly ever walks anybody. 35 RBIs picked up by Reynolds on the year. Manny Machado gets another chance. Baseball gods have smiled on Manny here to open up his major league career. Not just that he's been able to get it done in remarkable fashion, but coming up with opportunities. He had the home run his third in the second inning after a leadoff walk to Reynolds. Now he's got two on, and the pitch is going to be taken away. And again, a 2 0 count started by Coleman. Chen responsible still for four, the base runner on at second base. Now could be the losing pitcher in this ballgame. 2 0 count. Machado inside out to right field. Francoeur, he's got it. Dodging at the last yeah. second there to get the out. So first and second with two away and Robert Andino and Robert another guy very much like Mark Reynolds the average not where he wants it but with runners in scoring position. You know, 275 coming into this afternoon which tells me that maybe a little bit more focus maybe cuts down the swing a little bit. Thanks contact and that can work wonders. Dino has struck out and fly it out takes a pitch on the outside corner. One that he thought had missed. Troy Patton in the bullpen, the left hander. Orioles lead it 4 3, even though the Royals have out hit them so far 8 to 5. Here's the 0 1 delivery again, leaning away. Tough pitcher for Andino Coleman. I mean, Andino basically hits with that front foot going to third anyway. <laughs> with a pitcher like Coleman, your instinct. Is to do that even more so with that sidearm delivery coming from that third base side. One one and he's staying out there and misses again two and one. Now he starts with that closed stance on the mound and if you're a right handed hitter. He's kind of over on the first base side but he's closed so. And then he steps right at you. Actually you can see his toe right in the middle of the pitching rubber which is 24 inches. Wide. And the plate at home plate 17. Two on delivery, and that's right where he wants it, pitching wise, and the count goes to two and two. Now, when you throw a breaking ball like that, you usually have some kind of guideline. Are you throwing it off the middle of the mask, which is in the middle of the plate, and then let it break to the corner? But again, very, very deceptive.
Runners off first and second. 2 2 delivery. And Dino mm -hmm. just getting a piece. Well, he covered that corner. Had a pretty nice two strike swing on a ball that stayed up. But that's the pitch to hit. And he missed it. See if he gets another good pitch to hit. And Dino looking to get out of the 0 for 11 that he is in right now. Ford off second, Reynolds off first. 2 2 delivery, and uh, stayed there and got him. So Coleman will get the strikeout, and that'll end the inning. The Orioles, though, will pick up an RBI in the Reynolds single, and at least for the moment, have the lead back at 4 3. third. The Orioles will go to the bullpen again. Ayala worked an inning and gave up nothing. And the ever more reliable left-hander Troy Patton comes on to pitch. For Troy a current 17 game scoreless streak covering 12 and two thirds innings including an inning and a third that he has worked in this series against Kansas City. Yeah look at the uh, again only the 11 walks in 51 plus innings and you know, it gets everybody out. So he's done a terrific job. Yeah, another guy out of that bullpen, Pedro Strope, on one of those scoreless schemes. Well, the battle of the bullpens with a one run lead. We go to the seventh inning, and it'll be Getz, then the top of the order, Gordon and Escobar. Chris Getz, one for two in the game, four for 12 in the series. Dragging a bunt, his specialty by the pitcher towards second base, showed it there, and will take the pitch away for a ball. Brigettes against the lefties on the year 220, 301 against right handers. And that's why the bunt's a possibility. He may he take it for a strike. He may hit 220 against lefties, but what does he bunt against left handers? I mean, the number's a little bit higher. Everybody in a step because of his speed. Now they back up on the right side as Reynolds goes back to his normal position and the strike and the letters and a one ball two strike count to get. Well, if you're ever going to hit a breaking ball against a lefty, that's the one you want to hit. The one that starts at you because it just hung a little bit. Now all of a sudden, with the one two strike, he can count. He can throw this ball right to that glove and he misses. Patton with the 2 2. And he gets it. So Patton will get the strikeout. Orioles only have uh, three strikeouts in the game. Hunter got a couple, and now Patton gets one. Well, he just throws it by him. You know, doesn't get it all the way to the corner. But again, lefty versus lefty. This is a game of matchup. Gets is only hitting 220, and that number goes down a little bit. Gordon also susceptible to the lefty hitting 248 against lefties and 316 off righties. 
Gordon's had another big day for them though. A couple of singles run scored and he's hit into a double play. Sweeping breaking ball is in there for a strike. Well, another that, uh, power bat. Yeah. At least against the Orioles. Well one to one to right and two to left in this series. And one off a lefty. And that's there for a strike. Patton gets ahead 0 and 2. See what you Gary what you like so much as we've seen uh, Troy mature as a pitcher is that you have a scouting report and everybody knows what it is but can you execute it and Troy's done a great job of being able to do that. I mean you just see the idea. He drops down a little bit he's come up with a two seam fastball Mike Flanagan at the end of Mike's uh, career as a left handed specialist learned how effective the two seamer to lefties because the good ones the Alex Gordons they cover that outside corner very tough pitch to hit. Two and two. Well, again it's very simple. And there's your load. And then your extension. And if you're left handed it's kind of stepping at you. Gordon not chasing and a full count. Three balls, two strikes. Here in the top of the seventh inning, one away, nobody on. Gordon with Escobar to follow, and then Mustakas, real tough part of the order. The Orioles will keep their bullpen active for the righty lefty matchups. 3 2 delivery to him, fouled off. Gordon just nubbing that one into the on deck circle. Three two delivery and got him all. Well an extra and the one thing if, if you saw Troy Patton last year he'd probably throw about eighty nine. Watch this ninety two. So again a little more velocity. He gets an Alex Gordon to chase. And then you have your second out. Two down nobody on and here's Escobar a single one for two and a sacrifice. He's had four hits in the series four for. 15 and Manny will move in at third base on him and the pitch is up high. Good numbers against uh, both right and left handers for Escobar. 282 lefties, 304 righties. Yeah, looking at their notes, Gary, they have him as the highest uh, batting average as a shortstop. Mm -hmm. Jeter's hitting 315. That'll be swung on and miss. Aren't we counting him as a shortstop this year? Maybe at bats as a DH for Jeter. And they're just using his numbers as a yeah. shortstop. Here's the 1 1 delivery on the way, and that'll be blooped in the air, right center. And McClough makes the catch. Nate McClough with a long way to go. Robs Escobar. And in this ballgame, the Orioles' defense, which has let them down this year, has had a shining Sunday. Seventh inning stretch time brought to you by Jack Daniels, Tennessee Honey. Fly straight. Drink responsibly.
of the postseason. It's defense. Nate McLeod with a tremendous play to end the inning. Well, yeah, he gets the Orioles up to bat, and that's what this game is all about. And, you know, again, if you just go back and look at this roster, uh, if you look at the roster, Gary, as you know, uh, you know, if you, you want to look at uh, Miguel Gonzalez, they got him out of the Mexican League. He pitches the best game of this series. I mean, really pitched well on Friday night. Uh, you know, it's supposed to be Andy Chavez. He struggles, had a bunch of injuries. He's now down to Triple Norfolk. You go get him. You go get Lou Ford. Dan Duquette's gone out, and, uh, you know, this has probably been the deepest 40-man, 50-man roster because it seems like they have 10 guys down at AAA that they feel like can play in the big leagues, and McLeod is one of those guys. And we talked about how good the bullpen is. Well, the one indication of that, uh, the numbers that they put up ERA-wise with the Orioles of 46-0 and 0 when they have had a lead after seven innings. That's a pretty strong number, and that tells you the pen's getting it done. Well, it really does. And the other factor is, uh, you know, 22-6 and six in one-run games, and maybe this will turn out to be another one. It's a number that would, you would think would be a little skewed because of the defense hasn't been that good. And then, what, 16 and 11 in two run games. So the close games, the Orioles have been winning. Taylor Teagarden doing the catching and leading it off here. Ground ball to a short right off the back of the mound. That time, Escobar. Teagarden is retired. One away, bottom half of the seventh inning. Orioles invite you to a very special American Red Cross blood drive. You can join in the Saturday event 8 to 4 here at Oriole Park. And you will receive a limited edition Oriole Park 20th anniversary baseball. Two tickets to an upcoming game. Chance to meet former Oriole Chris Hoyles. Appointments, however, are necessary. That event is coming up on Saturday. 1-800-RED-CROSS. That will do it for Coleman. He's going to come out of the ball game as he works an inning and gives up one hit. And that is going to bring in Bueno out of the pen. Francis Lee Bueno, the left-hander, will come on and face Nick Marcakis, who had a homer his last time up. will come on here to get a matchup. Yeah, last couple of years, he hails out of Cuba, but uh, last couple of years, actually, after starting uh, with the Braves early on in his career, he ended up uh, pitching in the Mexican League, Mexican City, last year with Monter Monterey, and not only did he pitch, he was a starting pitcher. So, again, he has been up and down. He's done a nice job. Actually saved five games down at their AAA affiliate, Omaha. And, again, why is he in there? One out, and you're going to try to match up, even though the Nick Markakis did hit a home run off the lefty chin. Nick with a homer and a double in the ball game will foul that one back. He's two for three, and the Orioles have used his long ball today, along with Machado's two RBI homer, and have built up the 4-3 lead in the ball game, batting here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Yeah, it came in at 0 for 11 with about six line drives. Nothing to show for it other than a sacrifice. And that is taken up high. Getting the home run here in the ballpark that he was able to pull on that one is 
ninth home run at home this season. Not much question about that one. He launched it. 1-1 one, one delivery to him. And that ball in the air to center field. Kane. Two outs. Bueno's last outing was at Triple A. He was recalled on Monday for the third time. His last outing was August 2nd. He pitched at Reno. A couple of innings in that ball game. 0 and 0 with a 386. He's only worked a five innings now in three games here at the major league level. Two down. Here's JJ Hardy. Bueno's pitch a fastball that will miss ball one. Yeah, they had a left-hander that we had seen with Minnesota, Jose Maharis, who, in fact, is one of his last appearance, three-run home run down in Texas to Mitch Moreland, and he wasn't apparently happy the way they were using him. They said, "Well, goodbye." Betancourt, the second baseman shortstop, wasn't playing enough. Goodbye. They want to find out who can play on this team. And One-one chopper handled by Bueno. And uh, quick work of that one. He retires the side in order. The Orioles gone. We go to the eighth inning. The O's trying to pick up win number 62. Have the lead. In the opener of that game on Tuesday, way in Chen against Josh Beckett. Our coverage on Mass and HD 630 O's Extra presented by Jeep, followed by our game coverage at 7. All the access you need right here on Mass. Uh, you can see the numbers of Beckett. His last start, three home runs, eight runs the other day. Gets a very good hitting team in Fenway Chen. Coming off a uh, game where he did not pitch well, they just kind of ambushed him. A lot of balls in the middle of the plate, so. But again, he's pitched against the Red Sox, and you can see from his numbers, he's having a terrific year. As is Pedro Strope, who's going to come in and pitch for the Orioles, and uh, he's working. We talked about uh, scoreless schemes, 15 scoreless appearances, 14 and a third innings, and again, uh, third best earned run average uh, in the American League. And what you can see, though, really nobody hits him. Only the one home run all year long, and he will face three, four, five. Is that the walks are a little bit higher than you would like? Top of the eighth inning, and the pitch will be taken as Mustakas will lead it off. Mustakas' 18th home run came in the fourth inning. They would follow that up with the Pena sacrifice fly for a couple of runs in that inning. Another run scored on a double play ball for Kansas City. That accounts for the three they've got in the ball game. And Mustakis, a one ball, one strike count. Strope uh, pitching against Kansas City for the fourth time. He's worked three innings, given up a run on three hits against the Royals this year. And that one not close to getting, and a one two count. Well, what I like about that, number one, was a great breaking ball, but the way that Taylor uh, Teagarden. Went down and blocked that ball because if he throws the same pitch with two strikes, he's going to be able to keep it in front of him. I mean, really did a nice job of uh, 
practicing what you would want to do if you do get to two strikes with a hitter. One two got him. Oh that's pitching. Established middle 90s with great movement and then throw two back to back great breaking balls. This one just starts in the corner and just dives downward. And uh, with the four strike five strikeouts so far Connie you have won a thousand dollars for the Maryland lottery for your chance to be the Maryland lottery contestant of the game. Play strike it rich scratch off send your non winning ticket codes at mdlottery.com slash strike it rich. Billy Butler. Butler a couple of singles run scored. A two for three in the ball game. And a six for 16 in the series with. A couple of home runs and Butler will take it outside ever dangerous here in this situation in a one run ball game in the eighth inning. Yeah, and then Campos misses that strike. At the outside corner and he doesn't get the right arm up. Pacing stroke for the first time. Is Butler. 2 0 count. And that is there for a strike. <laughs> well, not looking for that. And why would you? Outfield deep, shaded a bit to right. Same pitch, didn't get it. Three and one. Well, he's thrown three strikes, and uh, Angels called one of them. So everything I said, I take back. So easy to do. You were right again. Well, three ball, one strike. Either they're over the plate or not. That's. Here's the three one delivery, and that's there three two. Yeah, a lot of the. Uh, Broadcasters for the Royals were saying that's kind of a nice hat that Pedro has. I said, well, it's working. So let him wear his hat anywhere he wants. Don't give it up. 3 2 delivery outside. So Strope will surrender a walk here. That's only the third walk picked up by the Royals in the game. Hunter gave up the other two. This will come with one away. And time to text in your vote for the AT&T player of the game. The candidates in this one, Manny Machado, has delivered his third home run, two RBIs. Mike Mustakas, he's picked up the homer, his 18th in the ball game. And Nick Marquez, a big day, double homer, RBI. Text in your vote, A, B, or C, three one eight two six. One down, one run game, eighth inning. Runner at first, and here is Lorenzo Kane, and that's a strike. Well, this is the way this ball game should go. The other first three were so <laughs> divergent with each team dominating over the other and switching off in the first three games. This one has not been that way. Here's the 0 1 delivery and fouled off at the plate. Don't know how that didn't hit him. I think it may have come up and caught him in the chops a little bit. 0 and 2. Man, yeah, just running fastball. Take a look right here, and he trying to get the bad head out, and you can see right off the fist. Let's talk about getting jammed, and look at the little bit of the bat leaves. He comes back to get a new bat on an 0-2 count. 0 for three in this ball game, and two for 11 in the series for Kane. On at first base, Butler. Strokes delivering the 0-2. Well, we 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 saw with the first two home runs by Machado, it's all right to to throw a guy a breaking ball when he's late on your fastball, but it better not be a strike because it speeds up the bat. Make him go chasing. One two shattered the bat that will go to left field. And it'll be hauled in by Ford, two down. Now, very fortunate at bat right there because Pedro gets that slider up. But Kane, a young hitter, misses it. So, two away for Jeff Francoeur. Single walk and a ground ball out. Orioles with a chance to gain a game on the Yankees, who have lost to Toronto 10 7 today. Orioles six and a half behind in the division race. 
Butler still at first to away. Frank Core off the end of the bat. Randall Stork will go get it. Bobble it, bobble it, and still get the out. <laughs> Reynolds had to bare hand that one as Strope had three chances at it. And fortunately for him, on the third chance, it finally all came together. And Reynolds again, this time barehanded, makes the play. Not the way it was written up, but it works. the American Heart Association Heart Walk. To date, 328 walks for a total of $16,400. Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and more active lifestyle. After that tremendous defensive play, yeah. lots of high fives, fist. Well, Pedro a converted infielder, and I always thought because maybe he didn't hit that well, now we... What's your favorite candy bar? Butterfingers. But he got the out. That's, That's right. The important thing wasn't pretty, but it worked very Reynolds, effective. Reynolds had a good day at first base and uh, made a nice barehanded play on that. No, he also it. put him in. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? Him about his fielding. <laughs> Maybe the need to be sent down for a day or two to work on it. Machado right there listening in. PFP says what they call him. Pitchers fielding practice. Got to get out there. Off day tomorrow. Not anymore. <laughs> Nate McLeod had the plate for the Orioles. McLeod with a single one for three in the ball game. Batting here in the eighth. Four, five, and zero oh for the Orioles. Three, eight, and zero oh for the Royals. The fastball Bueno inside to him. Coleman worked an inning, no runs, had a hit and a strikeout. The Orioles closer getting ready to come on in what is at least for the moment a save situation. Ayala. Ooh. Rocket shot way back and foul. Just missed that foul ball by about two seats. Yeah, the Mis the Mustakis pole that he did hit earlier in the game. Well, it's not like Nate hadn't hit home runs his first year with Pittsburgh. He's 26, All Star, stole a bunch of bases, a couple of times in his career over 20. Smart hitter, three and one fastball. You look for it, got it, just pulled it foul. He had to talk to Wayne Kirby. I don't think he knew where that went for sure. He was still looking up in the air and he asked Kirby after as he started back that was that really foul. Three ball two strike count. And he is on with the walk. And Bueno gives up the free pass to open up the inning. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Orioles may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. That'll be it for Bueno. He'll be coming out as Adam Jones, the designated hitter for the Orioles, will be coming to the plate with a runner on. And the Orioles try and add to it in the eighth up by one.
chance to enter to win a meet and greet with Adam Jones. Stay tuned to Orioles games all season long for more chances to win exclusive Masson prizes. And Adam taking a look at the reliever coming out of the bullpen, Aaron Pro. Yeah, Crow, I mean, he's dominated lefties. He will face, of course, Adam Jones, who's a right handed hitter. Done a nice job for him. Second year in the big leagues. Uh, again, another number one draft choice. Originally drafted by the uh, the Nationals 2008 did not sign couldn't come up with a deal the next year by the Royals. Adam Jones 0 for 3 off Crow. He's had a walk run scored he's got a six game hit streak he has not extended as he's taken an 0 for 2 in the ball game with a strikeout and a ground ball out. First game is designated hitter for the Orioles. Giving Matt Waiters uh, the day off at least up till now and that'll be a two day off for the Orioles not playing tomorrow. Jones will pop that one up right center field coming hard Frank Poor will not get there. Got a force at second base not in time. Great base running by McLeod to keep himself close enough. And a base hit for Adam Jones as Frank Gore couldn't find it. Yeah, Nate goes about halfway and then turns towards the outfield. And when the ball drops, and I think you kind of sense this because you can see Frank Gore battling the sun. You know, right here, Nate's uh, in the bottom right of our picture. Uh, and again, uh, because the ball right there, he sees that and then with great speed easily. Well, maybe not easily, but by a step or so. Runners at first and second with nobody out now. So a base hit for Adam Jones. Loves DHing. And a seven game hit streak for him. Now Orioles can add to it. They've got two on, nobody out, and trying to move him up. Ford turns to Buddy, his walk struck out and flied out. The Orioles have gone two for seven with runners in scoring position in the game. And object now is to put two in scoring position. Moustakis will play at that 45 degree angle at third. And Ford will try and bunt it down there. And there's a beauty. Moustakis has got it. Play made the first to get the out that gets yeah. covered. Wow. Like the old days. Perfectly executed. Make the third base. Mun fielded. And Moustakis has to do that. There is running back to the pitcher. They may have come to third. Even though know McLeod has great speed. So a strikeout hitter at the plate, even though Mark Reynolds has put the Orioles ahead. You'll see how they'll play this. Two in scoring position, infield drawn in. Mark Reynolds, the RBI single, came in the sixth inning. Right now, the go ahead possible game winner. That's going to get away. And McLeod will easily score, and the Orioles are up by two. Well, the uh, sacrifice sets this all up, and then I don't know how they'll score you, but that's a ball that Pena should have caught. It's just a slider away, and he just missed it. Flat out missed it. The Orioles take advantage of it for the fifth run. So, McLeod. So, let's see. The, uh, the base on balls, the great play in center. Having a nice little afternoon. Good job in center field. That's going to go to second base. Knocked down Gats. Runner stays and he gets the out. Reynolds trying to punch it through. Jones not going. On contact stays at third. And there are two down. Follow the Orioles with the MLB.com at Bat 12 app for your iPhone, iPad, Android, Blackberry, Windows Mobile. Live audio pitch tracking video highlights and more at Bat 31826. Two down. Runner at third base. Machado again. Home run came in the second inning is third. He has flied out twice since. Infield with two away can back up. And the man he chants. And the pitch is in there for a strike. Johnson still in a safe situation here. With a two run difference. He's ready. Watching. And uh, fouled off by Machado on two. That's some serious movement from Aaron Crow. The ball started about the inside third and ran about a foot at 95. You can see how this was the uh, 12th 
pick draft choice or the first round the 12th guy picked and they're up the ladder at 95. So that will retire Machado but the Orioles get a big run here picking it up on a pass ball. Johnson will come on and try and close it up. And brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. And by Dodge. See your authorized Dodge dealer and experience a world of performance, design, and fuel efficiency. Schedule a test drive or go to dodge.com and check out their powerful lineup. Well, Eric Camden Yards, the Orioles up by two and a chance to make this a 2 2 4 game set for Jim Johnson looking for another city. Yep, uh, already 33 uh, of them. And. Uh, why not? He's done a terrific job. We'll talk about MVPs on this ball clerk, certainly in the top three, maybe top two. He's done that kind of job, closes games, and like our good friend Lou Pinelli used to say, when he was managing Seattle and they weren't closing games, you got to win the games you're supposed to win. And this is one for the Orioles with a two run lead with Johnson on the mound. Eric Hosmer will lead it off. It is taken for a strike. The Orioles will move McClouth over to left field from center. And Adam Jones, who is the DH, is going to now take over in center field. So now Jim Ford Johnson's out. the DH. Well, no, Johnson's in for Ford. The Orioles don't have a DH anymore. Well, if somebody has a hit in that spot. No, Jones still hits in the spot. Okay. Sunday. I understand. It's a day game after a, a Whatever night it was. day game. Day game after a day game. <laughs> and that is fouled off by Hosmer and a one ball, two strike count. When the clock was at 12 last night, mm -hmm. I didn't know that because I hadn't seen it be at 12 here at the ballpark in many moons. Many moons? What would you think when it got to one? Well, I could see that. <laughs> Smaller number. Yeah, no, it was over, you know, but it, I didn't know if it was 11 or 12. And the slow roller will be played at second base by Andino, and that's the first start in the ninth inning. Let's update you on the voting for the AT&T player of the game. So far, it looks like that. Still time for you to text in your vote, A, B, or C, to 31826. Jim Johnson this year, two for two in save opportunities against the Royals. It's the fourth game he's pitched in. He's given up no runs. Three hits over three innings against the Royals this year. Here's Brandon Pena. Pena doing the catching. Set a sack fly 0 for 2 officially. The Orioles try to make it a 5-4 season series against Kansas City. The Orioles have lost only two season series against the Royals over the last 10 years. And uh, Jim Johnson out there to make sure that doesn't happen in this game. And you would think that uh, Brian Pena is going to be taken here down by two runs. 2 0 delivery he does, and it'll miss 3 0. Yeah, gets on, uh, on deck, and of course he hadn't hit a home run in close to 800 at bats, but doesn't mean he won't hit, even though they're down by two. And that one looked at. 
Yeah, high strike. And you're going, you sure? And Campo's saying yes. I'm not going to call the low one. I'm going to call the one high. Here's the 3 1 delivery on the way, and that one is also there. Well, this is really what you need to do. You need to try to get on base, get the tying run to the plate, and then force Jim Johnson to throw a strike. And with his movement, he'll throw it to the middle of the plate, let it run to the outside corner. 3 right 2 in the end of right field. Going back, Mark Agus has it lined up, and he's got it. And that's what you do with a two run lead. You make them put the ball in play, even though they hit it well. Let one of your guys run it down. Who better to do it than Jones or Markakis or even McLouth, who made a great catch earlier in the game? Ayala on the line to pick up his fourth win against three losses on the season. Chen, the starting pitcher, could be eight and a ten. Chen gave up four runs, seven hits over five and a third. The Orioles starter, Tommy Hunter, non decision. Three runs on eight hits over five. The bullpen has given up nothing. Ayala, Patton, Strope, and now Johnson. And a strike taken. Chris gets at the plate, ninth inning, two down. Wow, this is one of those grinded out games. A must win. And it'll be inside for a ball. 20,935, 2935 on hand here in this beautiful Sunday afternoon. And the Orioles hope to make it even nicer with their 60 second win. Outside. Slipped on him, and the count goes to two balls and one strike. Fans on their feet for the Oriole closer. Here's the 2 1 delivery. Ball put up in the air, left center field. Jones coming over. Ball game over. And the Orioles have come away with a win. Johnson comes on and retires the side in order to finish this off as the Orioles will take the season series five games to four, and they even up this four game set at two apiece. Five, six, and oh for the O's, three, eight, and oh for the Royals.